live from Shefford Studios. My name is Dr. Ashvin Sood, and I am alongside my friend and dear colleague, Dr. Jeremy Chapman. And we welcome you to Divergent Minds, sponsored by the SSM Health Trefford Studios. And Jeremy, who are we and what is exactly Divergent Minds? We are two up-and-coming child and adolescent psychiatrists who uh, are fully practicing with full patient caseloads and do the whole uh, child psychiatry thing. And we also do this weekly broadcast because part of our commitment and part of our interest is public education using social media and, uh, and and multimedia as part of the mental health experience. So we go live on Facebook right now every Wednesday, uh, 12, 15 to 12, 45 for a half hour. Uh, that's central time, 1, 15 Eastern. And we'll let people do the math if they're in other time zones. Talk <laughs> about various topics uh, in children's mental health. Uh, frequently have guests. We have a, a guest coming on next week with Dr. Sood. Um, and uh, we have fun. If you have questions or comments, please drop them in the chat beneath the uh, the broadcast here, and, and they will make their way to us, and we can address them. Uh, other than that, I think I, I covered the main point, so let's jump in today. It. What are we talking well, about? Well, we are diving in uh, to the parents, clinicians, and hey, teens, if you're on Meta or Facebook, good for you. Welcome to our generation. Uh, we are talking about the newer social media titan, TikTok. TikTok is a gargantuan monolith of power in the social media world now, using all my big 10-word SAT, uh, SAT words to describe it. Uh, it is created and founded in back in 2016 as a Chinese um, uh, initial kind of combination of two apps, uh, that combined lip syncing as well as music and audio and video uh, creation. Remember uh, what it was called back then, by the way? It was I had called, it. Oh, did you have it? Was it uh, Musical.ly? Yeah, or... I had Musical.ly back in Musical. the day. That's what it was called. And then it was combined with another one in the international stage to be now known right. as Zuyin. Yeah. Which is, which is what the world outside of the United States knows TikTok as. Is Interesting. Today. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about TikTok today. And yeah. we welcome anyone to ask questions about it. But but I, Dr. Chapman and I have had some experience with TikTok and our own content creation. Yes. I'll, I'll open the floor to you, Dr. Chapman. What do you think of TikTok? And like, I'll just start there. How, what was your story with content creation with it? My story with TikTok was, uh, it's funny, I um, I wanted to be involved in it. I knew it was going to be big. I'd still know it's going to be big. And, you know, it's one of those things, by the way, that that um, is following the same path YouTube did, which is that it seemed like, you know, I don't know if it was on the periphery. People didn't know if it was going to grow. Eventually, it, it did explode. And people all over the world um, use it and, and upload content to it and watch it. And uh, over time, I think larger organizations started to catch on and be like, oh, we should have a we should have a YouTube account. We should probably get up on here. So whether it was universities, hospital systems, um, anything else like you know businesses and and brands, um, TikTok is certainly heading the exact same way uh, as something that's going to be more mainstream, not just individual kind of peer to peer content creation, but really as a um, a, a forum of information uh, and entertainment as well. So I think advertisements are popping up on there. Like I said, all the same kinds of organizations, whether it's nonprofit organizations, schools, large, you know, multi-state hospital systems are <laughs> getting up on there and they're, and people are kind of catching on that. It's a, it is here to stay. It's growing. And um, the, one of the most interesting things also is that you start to hear that um, young people are just using it as their Google. Uh, they're not going to google.com and looking up how do I, you know, uh, peel a banana. They're just looking it up on TikTok and there are, sure enough, um, tutorials and information about anything, including mental health. So people are saying, you know, gosh, I, I think I heard someone had OCD. I'm, I wonder if I have OCD. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search it in TikTok here. And sure enough, they will be met with tons of videos 
about OCD, whether it's individuals sharing their own story with diagnosed OCD or with what they think is OCD. Um, there might be some clinicians or non-clinicians putting up videos that say, here's five things, five signs that you may have OCD, right? Um, right. So there's a big issue with, um, is information valid, credible, uh, or is it kind of um, counterproductive out there? Uh, now, let me shift gears and tell you my own in, uh, adventure with it. I, I, I made an account on TikTok right at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, probably February or March of 20. And it was yeah. still pretty young then. I mean, it was not, relatively speaking, it was not that huge of a thing. Um, and I was just using it for silly stuff, you know, uploading some kind of videos of myself or even my kids lip syncing songs, not really doing much with it. Um, and uh, and then about a year later or so, I thought, well, maybe I'll make an actual account and try and put some ADHD stuff up. And so I made an account. It was still silly stuff, though. It was all like, oh, this is what it's like having ADHD. I left the gas thing and the, and the gasoline thing. You know, I drove away and tugged it out of it. OK, so that was kind of like the kinds of stuff I was putting up. And then some people who were watching my channel started to say, wait, if you're a child psychiatrist, why don't you use that uh, level of authority and and really put some stuff out here that, that people could benefit from watching, you know, to help balance out. Um, some of the the many many voices that are you know don't have the necessarily have the training or authority to to speak to some of this stuff. So I did start to do a little bit more like practical, like okay, maybe I can be of service to people who have ADHD and help give them some tips and maybe define some psychological terms and concepts for them. I still always wanted to make it entertaining, like mm -hmm. doing a dance and showing a bunch of stuff. But mm -hmm. then I actually started doing some where I was just walking and talking you know, holding the camera at my, at my face and sharing my opinions about, you know, like DSM-5 and how I, I don't uh, love the diagnosis of ODD, for example. Sure. Um, oppositional defined disorder. And, and, and that kind of, TikTok really loves some controversy, I think. Um, it stirs up the pot. People then start sharing their own opinions in the comments. People share the videos. And so, you know, it's tempting to want to just put stuff up there that will get a response. But I think if we're being um, mindful of what we put up there and sticking to things that we actually believe and that we think would benefit the public, um, then it's all fair game. I had this interesting um, turn of events uh, in January of this year, about eight months ago, where I'd posted a couple of clips about um, implicit bias in medicine. And uh, that was just something I had focused on in medical school and done some presentations on. And they kind of landed hard and then resonated, it seemed with a lot of people. And so I put a few more up. And then uh, that kind of it's interesting how your account evolves over time. So all of a sudden, what started as an ADHD content account started to then be, oh, maybe this is more about, uh, you know, racial equity in medicine, because that's what many of the people who started to follow my account came there for. Now I'm like, well, I didn't mean I mean, I care about that. But my account and my expertise area is not really that. I mean, I'm a guy who has ADHD and treats ADHD. So I feel well qualified to, to talk about that. But I haven't touched my account now in like eight months because I've been <laughs> here at Shepherd Studios. So part of me is like, oh, you could have had more followers by now. You could, I don't know to what end, but um, so now it's kind of lying dormant and maybe I'll uh, reawaken it at some point when I have time. That's my story. Wow. Wow. There are so many divergent paths we could take uh, <laughs> yeah. from from there. And I think if you're joining us now, we're talking about TikTok from a child and adolescent psychiatry standpoint. Uh, if you're not familiar with the application, it's a video sharing platform in which people watch videos really quickly. And if they don't like a video, they just flip up. And that algorithm or the TikTok algorithm, like any social media algorithm feeds you things that you like to see. You spent 20 seconds on this cat video. Here's another cat video. Uh, you are interested in, for example, learning about OCD. Well, here's a bunch of content creators that, you know, create content on OCD. So you like you were talking about your implicit biases, people started picking up on that, that hit. You started creating more videos and gaining more followers. Um, so TikTok is fascinating, right? And and similar similar to you, you know, I jumped in the content creation world on TikTok for the first time. I was never big in social media for content creation or anything like that. So TikTok was that 
uh, from ourselves. And, you know, we, we created Mind Media Psych, which is what our TikTok account. And we, we just basically created silly videos, dance videos. Um, and people started watching it, like, you know, point to ADHD symptoms, point to, you know, uh, managing like, you know, uh, substance use, like all of these kind of sort of psychoeducational videos. Um, but I think what's important is that if you're watching this and you're not familiar with it, uh, your kids are. It just is. Um, for example, when Facebook was created back in 2004, it has something over like two and a half billion users now. Um, the TikTok was created in 2016. And now it's like second or third right behind Facebook in terms of the amount of users. And those users are in the younger demographics. So people under the age of 30 most likely have a TikTok account. It's very, very common. So I think it's important to know that if you don't have one, understand that children most likely are familiar with it. And it's good for you to know as a parent. Um, I got a question uh, from the audience, apart from misinformation, do you think there is any places on TikTok to get good mental health information? It's a great question. And, and Dr. Chapman and I talk about this all the time. Media in general, you know, there's always going to be sound bites and it's going to be super popular. So you have to realize what the source you're getting that material from. And that can be any talking head. Somebody came up to me the other day and says, do you agree with everything Jordan Peterson says? And Jordan Peterson is a psychologist who's a big media head. And a lot of his pieces are really kind of black and white. They're very polarizing. So I always tell people that if they get any of their information off social media, including from me, or Dr. Chapman, or any other person, be initially skeptical because it's social media. It is not peer reviewed. It has not gone through the academic rigor of individuals like dicing through the information and saying, yeah, this is actually factually correct. So I'm always telling, even to people listen to me, I'm a doctor, but that doesn't mean everything I say, you know, is a hundred percent fact-checked and is peer-reviewed and is guaranteed. And that's just because this is social media. You present something for followers, for views, for content, and we do as best as we can. Um, so I think there are good places for mental health information. You can get it, and I'll pass this along to you in a second, Dr. Chapman. But what I typically do is I tell parents and I tell teens, whoever you're digesting the information from, look at their credentials, get an overall idea of what the content they produce and watch a couple of their videos before you say, yes, they're absolutely right, or no, I'm not going to listen to this person. And then if you like what they're saying, go verify it by finding other sources of information, such as uh, going to, you know, uh, any of the academic journals, like just like the psychiatric times or clinical psychiatric news. And I'm just saying it from a, a mental health perspective before completely agreeing with them. And then you can verify your opinion. Going back to you, Dr. Chapman, about that. Yeah, same no. Well, another key point that you, that you touched on, and I just want to kind of circle back and, and reiterate here is that huh, TikTok is passively um, telling you or, or, or learning about you. And what I mean by that is it's not, you don't have to actively click on something or even search for it, for it to conclude that you're interested in that thing. You just have to watch the thing. Um, and if you are seeing a shocking video of a near plane crash and you just can't help but watch it, and then you kind of watch another one, well, TikTok now starts to think that that's what you're interested in. That's what you care about. And it's going to kind of usher you into the little corner of, of TikTok that is plane crashes. And it's going to give you car crashes. And it's going to give you other stuff like that. And just by passively um, logging seconds with these things playing, it's assuming that that's what you want. So this is why controversy, you mentioned uh, uh, that creator who has um, polarizing things on there. Well, people are watching it uh, with, with their jaw agape. And they're very, um, they, they just need to see what he says next. And so that's what rises to the top. So it's very hard as just a genuine delivery of, uh, of good information. If, if that's not interesting to people, if they're not catching their eyes, then it's not going to thrive. So if you or I wanted to have more of a 
platform and more of an audience to get good, credible information out, one of the things that would probably do the job is to put some really controversial stuff mm -hmm. up there or visually engaging stuff. Because really what TikTok cares about is how long people are watching the thing. And so if you have a new TikTok account, just be mindful of what you spend time looking at because TikTok is constantly drawing conclusions about you and your interests simply based on how long you watch something. And, and so goes it for kids as well. Um, I saw this really interesting visualization. It was, I think it was on YouTube actually, of how TikTok kind of pigeonholes you into certain little nooks and crannies of information based on what you're sitting there watching. So that's what we're going up against. And so you have these um, creators who have uh, loud voices or make songs or, or otherwise, you know, um, compel people to watch them. And uh, they're, they're building their audiences. So now us as kind of um, academic or scholarly or, or clinical creators, we're kind of, we have to kind of do that in order to um, keep up with it. Now, in your account, mm -hmm. you you've been pretty kind of genuine when you were making kind of posts, you know, a handful of months ago, you reached a point where you had a good platform and you were just kind of delivering information uh, in, in, in bite-sized nuggets and it was kind of working. So maybe that was after you all had gotten some momentum there. I mean, what are your thoughts on how, you know, on, on the pressure on of all creators kind of be wacky and wild and controversial? Yeah. So, I mean, right. Any it's the, it goes back to the old idea. Any attention is good attention. Any press is good press. It drives views. It drives follower accounts. It drives all of those types of things. But you and I are in a different situation where we also are, have to kind of, we hold ourselves to a higher ethical standard because content we create as physicians, people can take and say, wait, wait, the, the people who are experts are telling us this. Mm -hmm. So what it ended up doing, and I had to call myself out on this because I ended up doing some of those non-generic kind of like dances to you may have ADHD. And mm -hmm. I realized that, that was leading people to believing they have a diagnosis without a formal actual diagnosis from a provider. Mm -hmm. So quickly, you know, dialed back with my co-content creators to say like, listen, this is, we're going down the same path. And we were driven by the external validation, the excitement of getting followers, excitement of getting views, which is his own story in itself, because that can be a very empty existence to constantly need that attention, which we all need in some way, shape or form. But it still was getting to the point where we were realizing, wow, we're doing it for the views and the likes and not for the actual content which is important, right? Mental health is super nuanced. So what we real realized was in order to get out of that, because we were thinking if we got more views, we could do brand deals, right? Monetize. Mm -hmm. We decided to cut the head off the snake and say, we're not going to monetize this anymore. We're not going to go for brand deals anymore. We just want to create content if we're interested in it to show portions of it. And if we're liked or if we're followed, great. If we're not, okay. But a couple people might continue get some good information from that and yeah. it made it much more enjoyable uh to do that and we did have some success uh there was content we created if i'm not mistaken that looked at like you know adhd and bipolar disorder and the kind of like misdiagnoses between both uh we talked about uh kind of uh, uh one of my content co-content creators talked a lot about college acceptance and like how stressful that is for teens at this time sure. it can make them feel another one popular video we've talked about was how traumatic birth can be for women and how birthdays mm -hmm. can actually be a re-traumatizing experience mm -hmm. and so these types of takes on things uh made us feel like we were actually giving back to the community rather than pointing and singing and like could be this symptom could be that symptom which made us feel a little bit more whole um, we got another question here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna point this in your direction. Um, and if you're joining us, sorry, I didn't do our, our mid middle of the break uh, interview. Dr. Chapman and I are here on Divergent Minds, where we meet weekly Wednesdays, twelve fifteen to twelve forty five Central Standard Time, to talk about anything mental health related. Today we're talking about TikTok and how do you navigate TikTok safely as both a parent, a teen, and what are the pros and what are some of the drawbacks of this social media platform. One of the questions we got were, are there privacy concerns parents should be aware of with TikTok? 
want me to field it? Yeah. Parents, um, I mean, you're, yes, as, as Dr. Sue said before, your kids are on TikTok. If they don't have an account, then they're looking at on their friend's phone or something else. And um, privacy concerns uh, are, are twofold. One is if they're uploading information, of course, um, uploading videos of themselves, <clears throat> then those are out there in the world. Uh, and then I think the second thing is, as we were saying before, um, just tracking their habits, their viewing habits is giving information to TikTok about them and about demographics and stuff like that. Um, so I would, you know, it's really challenging because it's very simple for us to say to parents, well, make sure they don't have an account or make sure that you know what they're putting on their account. But um, not to be a fear monger, but there's a good chance that they may have an account that you don't know about where they're putting up other stuff and they don't share it with you and they only log into it when they're at school or something like that. So yes, there are privacy concerns. And just like anything else, this is a chance for you to initiate a dialogue with them, depending on their age and maturity level about what it means to uh, share stuff about yourself with the world. And, uh, you know, I was just listening to uh, um, behind, it's called behind their screens. Yeah. I was just listening to an audiobook this morning. And one of the points they made was, uh, it's not really a motivating factor for kids to say, do you know that that'll be up there forever? Many kids don't care or don't have the kind of brain tissue really ready to um, appreciate what that even means or the consequences of that. So that's not necessarily the best avenue to take. I think parents can be more curious about it and say, I would love to see what you make. I'd love to see what you watch in a non-judgmental way and maybe learn a little bit about um, how their parents or how their kids are, are using TikTok. And uh, it's, it's a personal thing though. So it's, it's definitely not easy. I don't know what your take is on that. What's your divergence convergent take? My take on that, you nailed it. Um, first and foremost, there will always be privacy concerns with any social media. We're on Facebook right now. There's privacy concerns there, right? Cambridge Analytica, the multi-million dollar uh, breach that occurred there, right? With data being given away. Um, that happens with Instagram. That happens with Snapchat. That happens with TikTok. So there's always going to be data concerns. So as a parent, it shouldn't be like one versus the other. Just, just keep that in mind. So what you want to do then is then to be this is from a quote from Walt Whitman, who was quoted on Ted Lasso, uh, that which I've recommended Dr. Chapman several times. And I watched, I watched the pilot last oh, night. Oh, very nice. And we'll have to yes. talk about what do you yeah. think. Um, uh, but the character in there says, you know, be curious, not judgmental. And that's the whole point of starting the privacy conversation, right? Kids want to teach their parents about it, they want to feel like they're masterful at something they want to feel like they have freedom in something and so what you can best thing you can do as a parent is say hey you know i've heard about tiktok i actually know nothing about it could you walk me through what it looks like and then they can show you their app and then they can show you the platform and then they can show you what they scroll through and then you're, you can point out what is what is what does for you mean? What does inbox mean? What does profile mean? Again, you're just asking questions and kids will more likely than not, rather than push you off, be like, oh, hey, all right, let, let me teach you. And through that, you can kind of see what they're looking at. And then from there, you can use the next step, which is to role play and say, all right, so, you know, if somebody does message you through the inbox of what you taught me, right, they direct message you, as you were saying, how do you respond to that? If they ask you where you're, you know, where you're located, or like, what happens if they ask you your age? How, how would you respond? Or do they ever send you anything that's mean or hurtful? How Do you tell them, like, you know, what you'll do? Or do you tell them, you know, what school you go to? And like, any of that? What do you think could be good if you did that? What do you think could be bad? And that's how you start yeah. to get kids to start thinking about privacy. Because, and, yeah, go well, for I mean, it. it still, uh, we should clarify that all the things that you just explained, you mentioned the word mastery, are great for, I would say, grade school age kids. Um, yeah. They're going to want to teach you maybe, you know, your kids who are between 7 and, and 10 or 11 years old. Uh, we'll be excited to have demonstrate mastery to teach you about stuff and blah, blah, blah. Now we have to be consider our age group and stuff like that. A uh, 16 year old dude is not necessarily going to do that. A 17 year old girl is not going to, 
Um, and so what approach can we take with them? I'll throw out one, and I'm curious what else you think. If you have a, a high school student who is um, on TikTok a lot, you know, one of the things that I think is you need to be realistic as a parent uh, and just acknowledge that, just, just accept the fact that they are not telling you everything that they're doing. And you, you, you know, it would be foolish to think that, that they are. Um, and maybe a different approach with them is to say, look, I know you're on TikTok. I know you watch stuff. I don't know everything you watch. I know you won't tell me everything you watch. And I'm not going to try and find out everything that you watch. That's not my business. It's unrealistic, et cetera. Um, I just need to know that you're being safe. That's what I care about. Um, and how can we, how can I know, how can I sleep at night knowing that you're not getting into some dangerous situations, some sticky situations, talking to people that you shouldn't be, um, they might appreciate that you're not, you know, um, tr treating them like, you know, kids that you're giving them a little bit of space and they should have a little bit of privacy for what they want to watch on there. Um, we don't need to know everything. So you can build a little bit of a rapport with them and, and treat them like, like young adults, which is what they are by yeah. saying, just, just, just assure me here that, you know, you're being safe with it. Um, I, uh, what is your take on how to approach this with someone who's older age like that? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. I think it also goes back to agency and having that freedom and say, listen, right. You know, I, I, I do role play a lot with teenagers because I'm kind of like, listen, people send you, you know, uh, sex or sexual images and texts all the time, mm -hmm. or they don't, or they might, how are you going to navigate that? Uh, people cyber bully, put f hate pages on Instagram or, you know, downvote like, or, 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 or report your content because they don't like you. What do you do about that? How are you going to deal with that? You know, those things do happen. Um, and then as for consequences, I kind of explain, you know, or parents, I try to encourage parents to say, listen, if you post stuff like this, if you do stuff like that, that violates the rules in the house, then a consequence has to occur. It's up to you, the parent telling the child, it's up to you whether you keep your privilege or not. I, I can't, you know, what's it called, uh, pull your privilege away out of the blue because we have to have an agreement about it. And if you violate that agreement, that's on you. That's not on me. We've agreed to that. And if you do, then in a week or so, we can come back to it and see if you're willing to get back that privilege. What's an example of an agreement or a condition? Agreement is like, listen, like, for example, our basic stuff, right? Like screen time. If I see that I have an app that watches your screen time, and if you're viewing stuff at 11 p.m. at night, I'll give you your phone in your room. But if you're viewing stuff past 11 p.m. at night, then the privilege is broken that you can have your phone in your room. Because you mm -hmm. and I have agreement, and I want to give you that responsibility that you can manage your phone while you also try to sleep, because that's a part of your identity. That's how you connect to people. Yes. But and as they go to live on independently, they're going to have to learn to self regulate that stuff too. So I think yeah. that's awesome. So now mom catches them on their phone at uh, 1145 p.m., takes it. Now, now what happens next? How do they earn it back? Well, I'll jump in and say Jacob MH says, love hearing you guys talk about TikTok, hashtag Divergent Minds. Thank you so much, Jacob mm -hmm. MH. I appreciate that wherever you are. Um, <laughs> you're saying, uh, and we'll quickly end on this question. You were saying mom takes the phone back at 1145 yeah. and comes yeah. out. So I would, and the kid comes in, right? And says, no, no, it's my phone. It's my phone. Yeah. yeah. Simply say, listen, you violated the rule. There has to be a consequence to it. We are going to give it 72 hours to come back and talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. cool off both you and I, mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back and revisit this. Okay. I want you to be able to have this responsibility. I don't want your phone. I don't want to know what's on. Like, I don't want to manage this. I want you to be able to do this responsibly. So this is me mm -hmm. teaching you how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then in three days time, we're going to sit down at the dinner table and go over the rules again mm -hmm. and see if you can modulate it. Mm -hmm. and if you can, then yes, then great. If you can't, then we'll have to recreate something. But I always give you space. But a it, defined amount of time too. Not a defined indefinite. amount of time. Exactly. Defined amount of time. You come back and revisit it. Let's do that. And it teaches them that, okay, kind of a reminder. Because kids need something concrete, just like we need something concrete. 
right? right. And that's the thing. We we are, we ever live in a world with laws and rules too that apply to us too. Um, we would be remiss in this conversation not to plug some of our own other stuff we're doing. For example, we have uh, a website now that is up where we're providing information for parents and for clinicians about uh, social media and video games such as TikTok. In fact, our TikTok episode is our first one and it's up live. And if you go to psychchild.com, you can watch it. We've just launched this. We don't have we don't have followers or views or comments yet, so we should be panicking a little bit, but we're going to build them over time. Um, we have about a 10 minute episode there where we explain it's kind of what we were just doing. What is yeah. TikTok and how can uh, safe way and how can parents um, kind of help navigate that? and how can clinicians help navigate that with people who come into their office? So we'll drop a link to that here too. Um, and it's, it's hopefully going to be a fun ride to, to provide that information for folks. You know, unfortunately, we are out of time. We can go on this topic for hours. Uh, Literally, yes. At, li yeah, absolutely. But next week, we're going to do something a little bit special. Uh, next week, we will have a TikTok influencer who has close to 400,000 followers come on our show. Our show will be broadcasted uh, from a separate account. It'll be from my own personal TikTok account because that person has a TikTok and we're going to try to drive as much attention. So if you're not on TikTok, don't worry about it. We'll upload it to the Facebook so that you can actually, the Facebook, we'll upload it to our Facebook page so you can actually see it. But that's our show for today. Um, uh, my name is Dr. Ashwin Sood. I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Chapman. We are Divergent Minds. We host our show, not next week, but the following week, every Wednesday from 1215 to 1245. Uh, and we have such a pleasure seeing you. Great to see everybody. We have love you all. Day. See ya. Bye-bye.